G'day everyone, and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be covering the fundamentals you need to start modding The Walking Dead Definitive Edition. A lot of concepts here also apply to other Telltale games, but for this video, I'm going to be discussing the fundamentals in the context of the Definitive Edition. With that out of the way, let's get started. What you're looking at here right now is my local installation of The Walking Dead Definitive Edition. We have an executable file, we have DLLs, and we have the archives directory, which contains all the assets for the game. Let's start at the beginning though. What is this wdc.exe file? I mean, you know, it's, it's the game, but what's it all about? Well, The Walking Dead is written using the Telltale tool, a game engine developed internally by Telltale for their games and written in C++. It's similar to the Unity and Unreal engines and supports custom scripting in the Lua programming language. Let's take a look at the assets that I mentioned previously. When you go inside, you'll notice that there's two distinct kind of files. There's these resdesk files, and if you scroll down, there's also these ttarc2 files. Let's begin with these. These ttarc files, also known as telltale archive files, are effectively archives of different bits of data, like a zip file or a RAR file. Now, because these are in a custom format, you can't just open these up in any old archive program, like 7-zip or pzip. To take a look at these, we're going to have to use a piece of software developed by the wider community called the Telltale Explorer. Let's take a look at one of these files. Let's navigate to boot data. Let's take a look at what's in here. As you can see, we've got all sorts of files. It's just like an archive. We've got these Lua files. We've got props, which are like prefabs or game objects for those familiar with Unity and Unreal. We have scene files, which contain all sorts of props and contain data about how a scene should be displayed and other sorts of files in here as well. I'm not gonna be covering what all these files are and what they do in great detail. That can be for another time. If we come back to the archives directory, you'll also notice that we have these resdesk files. These resdesk files are known as resource description files. And while they have the Lua file extension, if we try to open them up, you'll notice that it really doesn't mean much. It looks like a whole bunch of gobbledygook. It means nothing. That's because these files are encrypted. Luckily, we have tools available to help us open these resource description files. So let's take a look at what one looks like now. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of data we don't really care too much about, but this is the important part, the game data archives. See, each resource description file effectively points to one or more Telltale archive files. In fact, this is how the game knows what to load. When the game boots, it will go through all of these resource description files, build up a list of which Telltale archive files to include, and then go to each one of those Telltale archives and load up a list of all of their file contents. It looks something like this. You go through each resource description file, you take a look at all the associated Telltale archives, and then you build up a sort of virtual file system. This way, if I wanted to load a file, maybe I want to load clone.lua, the Telltale tool will be able to know, okay, this clone.lua exists in this Telltale archive and knows how to fetch the data. Now, the one caveat with this is that each file across all of the Telltale archives must be unique. Now, of course, this begs the question, what happens if they're not unique? This is where conflict resolution and priority comes in. Let's take a look at this resource description file again. Notice how there's a priority set in here. This priority is exactly how conflict resolution occurs. Let's just say we have two separate resource description files that point to two separate Telltale archive files that each have their own boot.lua. On the left, our resource description file has a priority of 10. And on the right, our resource description file has a priority of 950. Therefore, what will happen is the Telltale tool will say, okay, this has the higher priority. Let's go with this boot.lua rather than this one. This is very beneficial for modding and I'll come back to this in a sec. So we've got our resource description files. We have our Telltale archives. So if we want to load custom assets into the engine, all we have to do is create a custom Telltale archive file and then create a resource description file that points to it. Sounds easy, right? Well. How do we actually create a Telltale Archive? Luckily, there's a tool available called TTArchX, which stands for Telltale Archive Extractor. Now this bad boy is able to extract archives, create archives, and also encrypt and decrypt various different files. If we wanted to create our own archive, what we'd have to do is add all of our files to a folder, compile the Lua scripts, this part's quite important, with the Lua compiler, and then give this directory into the Telltale Archive Extractor to create a ttarc2 file. If this sounds like a whole lot of work to you, then you're right, it is. That's why we've created a graphical tool to allow you to more easily create these Telltale Archives. 
We call it the Telltale Script Editor. In fact, what we're going to do is create our very first mod. What we're going to do is in the main menu of the Walking Dead Definitive Edition is we're going to add an item and it's just going to be called Click Me. It's not actually going to do anything, but we're going to add one in there. So let's start. I'm going to call this Menu Mod. The author is some developer. The priority is 950 to make sure that our mod loads. And our project location is going to be located in here. I'm going to create a new directory and call it menu mod. All right, let's create it. Now, let's create the Telltale Archive or what it should be created from. I'm going to call this source. Now, inside of this source, I'm going to create a new script. Now, we could call it new file, but we want this script to inject some, some of our custom code so that we can add a new menu item. How can we do that? Well, let's go back to this diagram. Remember how I said that if we have a file name conflict, it will choose the file that came from the resource description with the highest priority? That's exactly what we're gonna take care of here. Let's open up the Telltale Explorer and look for the main menu script file. Now I know where this is located. This will be inside the menu data Telltale archive. So I'm gonna open this up, look for menu main.lua, and I'm gonna copy the contents of menu main.lua. I'm also gonna rename this to menu main so that it will override the existing file. I'm now gonna paste this in and remember how I said that you'd have to first compile the Lua files and run it through TTR text? Well, with the beauty of modern technology, we can simply build and run, which will run all of those steps for us including launching the game. Pretty neat, right? So if you notice your game is not hitting the main menu, make sure that Telltale Explorer is closed. There's issues with it being open while the game is running. So let's try that again. As you can see, we have the main menu and we don't have any extra items in here, but that makes sense. We haven't actually touched anything with this file. It's still the same as it was in the original script. Notice here how we've got these menu add function calls. Let's add an item. Menu add list button light. Click me, click me, and we're not actually going to do anything. This is just for the sake of learning. Let's run it. And look at that. We have our very own click me button added to the menu. Now, if you've been following along in the video, the reason why this works should be fairly obvious at this point. It's because we created a script with the same name as an existing file. We then created a Telltale Archive from it created a resource description file that points to this Telltale Archive file. In fact, if I go back to the Archive file, let's take a look for those files right now. Here you go. The program automatically created and extracted those files to the Archives directory for us to make the process easier. If we open this one up, you can see that it points to this source menu mod Telltale Archive and it exists right here. Well, I'm going to wrap up the video here. I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. If you've got any questions or criticisms, please leave a comment down below. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you all next time.